Hello everyone, I'm John, and I decided to start a new series this week because I made a video last week that gained quite a bit of traction. I was talking about my experiences with a summer camp that was mainly focused on reaching out to students who, well, did not have much of another chance of seeing Christ. So I decided that it would be really valuable for me to share with you guys how to talk to your friends about Jesus, because it is something really hard that we often don't do. So whenever I can, I'm going to try and interject, interject with personal stories when I have them to tell, and we'll go from there. So let's start here. The number one place where we should begin, and that's what I wanted to focus on this episode, is prayer. And I know that sounds cliche, I know it sounds like the Bible school answer, the Sunday school answer, I mean. But it has an incredibly high value. You know, it's a mysterious thing why God asks us to do this, why God asks us to pray for things that are also his will. But he tells us throughout scripture that if we pray, if we're truly seeking him and we pray, he will act. So I've found this in a lot of different ways. I've talked to some people and what they do is every morning when they wake up, they pray for just one opportunity to share their faith with somebody that day, no matter who it is. Other people, they might pray for a very specific person in their life. I know I've done that where I know I'm going to be working with a certain person, so I pray that God will give me an opportunity to share with them while I'm doing this. Sometimes we'll pray for specific circumstances, that God will, will give us opportunities to share light as we're, I don't know, maybe going somewhere special that's kind of out of our normal routine. So I wanted to start by sharing a story that happened uh, last year for me. So uh, what I did, um, was I went to a coffee shop every single day, a specific coffee shop, and I would read my Bible there. Now, that might seem like a weird thing, but I would read my Bible and hope and pray that it would start a conversation. So before I started reading, I prayed that God would give me an opportunity to share my faith with somebody using that specific passage and opportunity in order to help someone else and lead them closer to who God wants them to be. So this is the passage I read. I read Colossians 2. So I'm going to start reading part of Colossians 2 that will be important to this story. Therefore, ne let no one pass judgment on you in question of food and drink, or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you insisting on asceticism and worship of angels going on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, but not holding fast to the head, referring to Christ, from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why as if you were still alive in the world? Do you submit to regulations? This parts in quotes. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Referring to things that all perish as they are used, according to human precepts and teaching. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of flesh. So that was the passage I read. I wrote a few notes on it. And then as I was packing up, the owner of this coffee shop, who I had met maybe two other times before, we were on a first name basis, he walked in and he said, oh, are you doing a Bible study? And I said, yes. And he said, I used to hate those. And right then this thing sparked in my mind. This is my opportunity. This is, this is what I prayed for. So I asked him why he used to hate. Um, first of all, I asked him if he used to be a Christian. And he said, yes. And I asked him why he left. And his answer, keeping in mind that passage we just read was amazing, he said, I didn't like all of the rules. I wasn't allowed to listen to rock and roll music. I wasn't allowed to wear certain clothes. And he mentioned one or two other things. It was This was a year ago. I don't remember them exactly. That was exactly the passage that we had just read, so, or that I had just read. So I, sa I said that to him. I was like, hey, do you have a moment? And he said, yes. So he sat down and I said, can I, can I read with you the passage that I just read? So I, um, I opened up my Bible, and I read the same section that I just read to you. And I, I said a few words and then reread that one part. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom 
in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. So I was sitting next to him when I read this. He was looking at my Bible, and he was quiet for about 30 seconds. And then he, he grabbed my Bible out of my hands, and he looked at it and reread it. And he, he put his finger in the page and said, well, you know, the, the Bible has a lot of laws, too, or, like, Christianity has other laws, too. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's a good point. Um, we're not supposed to, you know, just have sex with whoever, or, you know, we, we, we were able to have, then, a conversation about what the Bible does say. However, that little experience may have changed the perception he had about Christianity. Something that we're going to talk about repeatedly throughout this series is that single times often aren't what lead people to Christianity. It often takes conversation after conversation, maybe days, months, weeks, years, before somebody actually decides to follow Christ. But those little parts of a conversation, those little things that you may feel like was a failure on your part, God uses those in this person's story to bring them into the kingdom of God. So if it's just those kinds of conversations that you have, maybe even one where you say, you know, that you're a Christian and, and that's it, or you say that you're a Christian and somebody thinks, oh, I didn't know Christians could be normal people. Those conversations carry a lot of weight. So let's stop there and let's pray together. Dear God, I pray that we can have conversations that ultimately will lead people to you, whether they start that journey, whether they are in the middle of it, or whether it's on the very end where we get to have the joyous part of accepting them into the kingdom of God. God, I pray that those watching this video can bring themselves closer to you. It's your name I pray. Amen. So, my challenge to you this week is going to be to do one of those things that I've already mentioned whether it's a certain location where you're likely to run into people who don't follow Christ, or whether it's waking up every morning and praying that God will give you an opportunity to share his name with someone, whatever that may be, I want you to pray at least a couple times before my next video from this topic next Saturday. And I want you to ask God for a way that you can share him with the world. See you guys next week.